Well, in preparation for doing the sail and rigging work on the boat, I've made a sailor's rigging knife. Now, some of you have known from the past weekend that I have broken my hand, and fortunately, I filmed most of the, this episode uh, of making the knife before I damaged my hand. So let me tell you a little bit about what makes a knife a rigging knife. One of the main characteristics of a rigger's knife is it has this very rounded end on it. And the name of this is called a sheep's foot end. Now the other characteristic is that the blade is actually very straight. And in most cases, the spine of the blade is parallel to the edge of the blade. Now, why it's shaped this way, there's a couple of um, ideas of why that is. One is, I think, basically folklore, and that is that uh, the captain of a ship would break the end of sailors' knives off so that they would not have a pointed end uh, in order to um, stop any type of a mutiny. Now, the reality is, is that this type of an end is a very handy utilitarian end. Uh, it has a nice point where you can actually do some actually cut sailcloth or leather with. And because it has this straight edge, it almost sort of acts as a cleaver that you can actually cleaver off rope. So basically, the knife is shaped this way for rope work. Now, another end that sometimes people call it a coping end, and to show how utilitarian this is, we all own a knife that has a coping end, and this is a utility knife, and you can see where the knife is straight, and that's a coping end, and this is a sheep's foot end. So again, you can see a very flat blade, which is very handy for a lot of different uses, hence a utility knife. So the materials I used was first I got a piece of 01 tool steel for the blade. The second thing was a piece of wedge wood, which is a very hard, dense wood for the handle. And then I have a couple of pieces of quarter inch brass for the pins, tube for the lanyard hole. So as usual, I start with a drawing for the tool. Uh, the overall length of the knife is eight inches, the handle being four and a quarter, and the blade being three and three quarters. And the total height here is an inch and a half. So let me show you how I made the knife and stay tuned till the end and I'll let you know how I broke my hand.
I've got uh, my blank all trimmed up now and I was working on the edge where the blade will be and I noticed that on one little tip here it appears that it has work hardened from the grinder and you can kind of hear that with the file if you hear it here uh, it sounds like it just kind of skates across it as opposed to out here you can hear it actually cutting the metal so what I'm going to do is I'm going to anneal the this part of the blank so that it'll be nice and soft so that I'll be able to cut that bevel on there easily. All right, now that we have that sort of a dull red, we can um, now just let that cool naturally and that should anneal it. So what I've got set up here is a jig in order to cut the bevel on my knife. Uh, this is a very similar kind of setup that you've seen in probably other videos where they use a screw eye at the end and then a round pipe to slide through there in order to do that. Now that's very beneficial for, for most knife makers in that, that the tip of the blade is curved so that that radius as it changes helpful. In the case of my knife where the blade is perfectly flat I need to be able to move this back and forth so that I'll be cutting directly on a perpendicular to the uh, leading edge with a knife. Uh, the other thing is I put a little block in here so that the bar will only go so far and that will be where my plunge line starts which I wanted to be just um, this side of the choil in the knife. So the way this works is I simply just put this on here and then file. Now you can see it's a, a fairly aggressive bevel. By aggressive I mean that it's tipping up towards this direction. Uh, as I file it I'll probably want the bevel to be not quite so severe and in that case what I can do is simply to lower that block of wood that I have down at the other end. So I'll file this down until I get to that center line and if I, my bevel hasn't come up far enough then I'll lower that down. So it looks like I'm down to that line now. Um, turns out the bevel that I had chosen is really um, pretty happy with. I, I like that it, the uh, proportions of uh, the bevel to the uh, straight part. Um, I found out that this uh, bronze bar, which is pretty heavy, was actually very beneficial in that the weight of it, I barely had to push down at all. I just was able to use the weight of that to, to file it with. Uh, I also found that I had some zip ties on here and they kept sliding off so I used some electrical tape which uh, held that on there much better. So what I'm going to do now is uh, change the file out and use a, a finer cut file to finish that up a little bit.
now that I've got the blade all shaped, uh, now what we need to do is to uh, harden it. And that's a basically a two-step process. First, I'll need to heat it up to about 1420 degrees Fahrenheit, which is where we, the temperature that you want to quench it. Now, luckily enough, uh, that temperature steel becomes non-magnetic. So what I'll do is I'll put a little magnet out there, I'll heat it up until it doesn't stick to the magnet anymore, and then quench it in the oil. Now I'm using oil because this is considered O1 tool steel, and the O stands for oil quenching. So that'll be the first step, is to get it quenched, and after that, then we'll temper it. So it's all cooled down now, and one of the ways to tell if you got it hard is to run a file across it, and if it kind of skates across it and doesn't cut into the metal, you know you're successful. So you can see that this just kind of slides right across there and doesn't cut into the metal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up all this uh, fire scale off of here so that I have uh, a nice bright finish in order to be able to read the tempering. So I've just got back from tempering the blade and I put it in my home oven for uh, one hour at 400 degrees. Now what tempering does is it reduces some of that brittleness that happens when we harden it. So if we hadn't tempered it, if I were to drop the knife, it literally could shatter like glass. So the tempering uh, helps give it a little bit more ductability and in reduces some of the internal stress that's in the metal. So you can see I've got a nice straw color, uh, and that's what I was going for, and that color tells me that it was tempered at the right degree temperature. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, give it one last cleanup, and uh, then we'll be ready to put the scales on there. Well, now that I've got the uh, blade all finished up and I've protected the business end of it here, I'm going to uh, take my wood and start making the scales. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace out the shape here. I'm going to make it just a little bit oversized and then I'll cut that out on the bandsaw. I'm using this white pencil like I've used before on dark wood 
because it's a little bit easier to see. Okay, so now after I cut that out, I'll clamp this on there and then I'll drill these holes and put these pins in there temporarily. And once I get those holes drilled, then I'm going to split the blank in two so I have the two scales. I'm just sanding the bolster part of the scales. It's important to finish this part before we glue it up because there's really no way to finish this without scratching the uh, blade. I've got my glue all mixed up here, so we're all ready for glue up. So I've got my two halves here. These are the inside and uh, my tube for my lanyard hole and two pins. Use a little denatured alcohol to clean up the squeeze out. And we'll let that cure overnight. Now that I've got the profile all shaped, I can now turn my attention to the fun part, and that'll be sculpting the handle.
Well, that works pretty good. Um, it's a little difficult with my hand, but I'm pretty happy with the way the uh, knife turned out. But speaking in my hand, the way that I broke it is, has nothing to do with the shop related or boat building at all. I was over the uh, past week, I was doing some shoveling and I was shoveling along pretty well until I hit a root and with a lot of force and the handle of the shovel uh, broke that metacarpal in my hand. Um, Hopefully it won't take long to uh, heal. It uh, is what they call a spiral fracture, which actually looks like a scarf joint. So when the uh, surgeon said it's going to heal stronger and faster because of that, I said, oh, like a scarf joint. He says, you get it, you know the mechanics of it. So hopefully it will heal quick enough that I can at least get some things started on the boat again. And in the meantime, I'll probably try to find some smaller projects that um, won't require a lot of big, large motor skills to do and hopefully still get some videos out. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you the next time on the Art of Boat Building.